So after having seen the criterions for successful innovation, namely perceived benefits and utilities, which should be new, important and unique, competition, compatibility of standards and technologies, standard construction and customer learning, barriers to competition, timing, network externalities, marketing capacities, service and personalization, customer involvement with co-creation, and finally, adequate targeting of opinion leaders, lead users, and early adopters in the different adoption cycles. We will see now the technology acceptance model, which is a model that integrates these different variables to summarize in an overall model that can forecast technology adoption and technology usage. New products and services or information technologies adoption fail because users do not adopt and use them, either because of the difficulty of use or because of the user reluctance to new technologies or no real perceived utilities and supplementary benefits. Thus, understanding the conditions and factors under which new tech products and services will be embraced by humans is a high priority issue. The technology acceptance models and other extended models have become well established for predicting new product service acceptance, usage attentions, behavior via mediating variables such as perceived usefulness, perceived ease of use. So let's start with the basic TAM model, the technology acceptance model, which is based on the theory of recent action. This theory suggests that when users experience a new technology, two factors influence their decision about how and when they will use it. Notably, the user's belief about perceived usefulness, which is defined as the degree to which the use of a new technology will enhance users' performances, so the benefits, and second, the user's beliefs about perceived ease of use, which is the degree to which the use of new technology is easy to use and without effort. Both variables are influenced by external cognitive variables, such as technology fears, and social variables, such as status or social pressure. So you can see the uh, external variables influence perceived ease of use and perceived usefulness of the technology. And this then influences the attitude toward using the technology and subsequently by behavior intention to use the technology and finally actual system. The TAM has been continuously expanded. The major upgrades being the TAM2, the unified theory of acceptance and use of technology. The TAM3 has also been proposed in the context of e-commerce and artificial intelligence with an inclusion of effects of trust and perceived risk on technology use. Venkatesh and Davis extended the original TAM model in 2000 to the TAM2 to explain perceived usefulness and usage intentions in terms of social influence, that is subjective norms, voluntariness image, and cognitive instrumental processes, that is, job or task relevance, output quality, result demonstrability, perceived ease of use. In the model, subjective norms are defined as an individual's perceptions that other individuals who are important to him consider if he could perform a behavior and use a given innovation. Voluntariness is defined as an extent to which potential adopters perceive the adoption a decision of the innovation to be non-mandatory, uh, that is, based on his or her decision. Image is defined as the degree to which use of an innovation is perceived to enhance one's status in one's social system. Job relevance is the personal perspective on the extent to which the innovation is suitable for the job and brings benefits. Output quality is the personal perception of the innovation's ability to perform specific tasks. And finally, result demonstrability is defined as the production of tangible results that directly influence the innovation's usefulness. So in summary, you can see that subjective norms and image, as well as uh, the innovation related to job relevance, output quality and result demonstrability influence positively 
perceived usefulness. On the other hand, the traditional perceived ease of use of an innovation and technology also positively influence perceived usefulness. Experience and voluntariness to adopt the innovation uh, act as moderators and influence uh, the link from uh, the different input variables on intention to use and finally usage behavior. However, the TAM and TAM2 are not ideally suited to explain adoption of hedonic systems, for example online games, music, virtual worlds, online shopping, learning education, online dating or digital music, or as well as social networking or gamification. Both TAM theories are also not suited to explain other important variables such as privacy concerns, technology reluctance and technology fear. Thus, alternative models were proposed for these kinds of new variables, which fit to the e-commerce, uh, digital platforms, digital applications and all digital technologies of today. For example, in the unified theory of acceptance and use of technology, also called the UTAUT1 and subsequently the UTAU2, formulated by Venkatesh and colleagues in 2003, examines four key constructs to explain user intentions to use and technical innovation and subsequent usage behaviors, namely performance expectancy, effort expectancy, social influence and facilitating conditions. Performance expectancy refers to the user's feelings of improved performance when using a new technology. It is constructed by perceived usefulness, task fit, relative advantages of the technologies and outcome expectations of the innovation. It's similar to the perceived utilities in the temp model. Effort expectancy refers to how a person believes that using the new technology would be free of effort. It consists of two constructs which are perceived ease of use and complexity of the innovation. It is similar to the ease of use concept in the temp. Social influence is the degree to which individuals perceive important that others believe they should use a new technology due to social norms, image and pressure. Social image is the degree to which use of technologies will enhance the user's social status within his or her social group. And finally, facilitating conditions are defined as the degree to which an individual believes that he has the appropriate knowledge and resources to use the new technology. Retro compatibility increases facilitating conditions. In the UTAUT1 model, gender, age, experience and voluntariness of use are posited to moderate the impact of the four key constructs on usage intention and behavior. As UTAUT1 has been conducted for users' technology adoption in the organizational context, Venkatesh and colleagues developed in 2012 the UTAUT2 model, extended from UTAUT1 to describe individual users' new technology adoption behaviors in individual consumer contexts. Next to the four core concepts of the UTAUT model, performance expectancy, effort expectancy, social influence and facilitating conditions, three additional core concepts are included. Hedonic motivation, price value and habits. Hedonic motivation is defined as the fun or pleasure derived from using technology and it has been shown to play an important role in determining technology acceptance and use. Price value is defined as consumers' cognitive trade-off between the perceived benefits of the new technology and the monetary cost for using them. It is similar to perceived value or benefits of an innovation. And habit is defined as the extent to which people tend to perform behaviors automatically because of learning. Habit occurs when one uses the technology repeatedly and automatically. So in the UTAUT2 model, you can see that next to the basic variables that is performance expectancy, effort expectancy, social influence and facilitating conditions, 
hedonic motivation, price value and habit directly influence behavioral intention to use the innovation and subsequently technology use behavior. Again, age, gender and user experience play an important role by moderating these links on behavioral intention. Newer models integrate privacy concerns, trust in technologies, technology fear and consumer well-being. Privacy concerns arise through the way that new technologies, such as for example AI, the IoT and smart connected objects, track and collect personal data for customization. This can seem intrusive and arouse privacy concerns. Privacy concerns are defined as the degree to which users are concerned about the flow and control of the collection, storage and sharing of their personal information. Perceived technology security refers to the perceived risks of new technologies themselves and how it might cause intimidation, errors, data attacks, accidents or unauthorized access to user accounts that could harm users and their health. Perceived technology fear can be described as users' perception of the limited ability to manage, control and perform securely with new technologies. Technology trust is defined as a positive expectation of a technology, the degree of confidence in that technology, and the belief that one can rely on it. Trust can be especially helpful in overcoming the uncertainty that is often present with technological advances. So trust is important in the general area of technology acceptance. Consumer well-being is described as the degree to which consumers perceive technology experiences in positive ways through cognitive judgments and effective reactions. This can be linked to physical and mental health, but also positive moods and emotions. Unpleasant or pleasant effect that refers to emotions like guilt or sadness. Life satisfaction and quality of life. But also economical success, pleasure, self-realization and harmony are influencing and characterizing consumer well-being. In the opposition of the concept of consumer well-being, the concept of bad being refers to unpleasant effects that can be caused by a technology such as stress, addiction or anger. It implies a low level of life satisfaction and generally negative moods and emotions. So in this model from Ostrom and colleagues, applied to the context of artificial intelligence in consumer service sector, you can see that privacy concerns and technology fear impact negatively various trust, impact positively the customer response, namely approval, adoption and usage. User innovativity and user self-competence also influences positively the customer response, approval, adoption and usage. And subsequently, we can see the consequences. So if the customer experiences positive usage, then personalization, competence, convenience and well-being are created. On the other hand, if it is perceived as negatively, customers perceive loss of control, loss of privacy and even isolation. In this model, we add perceived self-congruity perceived self-efficacy, innovativeness and social image to the traditional TAM model. So users' intention of usage are influenced by social and cognitive value. Namely perceived social image, which is the degree to which the use of an innovation is perceived to enhance one's social status in one social group. If technology is perceived all the more useful as it helps to be consistent with the group's norms, image enhancement. Perceived self-congruency is the congruence of a product with the values of a user. A product perceived as congruent may be considered easier to use and more useful as an incongruent one. Cognitive variables include perceived self-efficacy, which is one competence to complete tasks and reach goals in specific situations due to a new technology. And innovativeness is the willingness to adopt an innovation Innovative people are more open to new experiences and innovation and re less reluctant to 
perceived risk. So we applied this extended model to a digital service from the processor producer Intel. And we actually validated that the impact of social image, self congruity efficacy, innovativeness, hedonism, and perceived privacy concerns or perceived protection of private lives on perceived usefulness and subsequently on the intention of use. We also showed that this impact of these variables varied according to the context of usage of IT, namely leisure, administration and pedagogy. In the following we apply a technology acceptance model that we enhanced to new contexts such as smart connected objects and IoT, thus the Internet of Things. So we can see that privacy concerns impact negatively utilitarian value, which influence positively perceived usefulness. So the higher the utilitarian value, the higher the usefulness. It is the same for social value that influence directly perceived usefulness and well-being, which influences usefulness and perceived use. All of them influence subsequently the final output variable use of smart connected objects. We see that trust moderates positively the impact of utilitarian value on perceived usefulness. In other words, the higher the trust, the higher the impact of utilitarian value on perceived usefulness of smart connected objects. We have also developed an extended acceptance model for the acceptance of a sleeping app. So we can see that utilitarian value, social value, hedonic value impact positively well-being, which in turn influence positively the adoption and usage of the application and subsequently word-of-mouth attentions. We can see that privacy concerns, on the other hand, influence negatively well-being and negatively trust, which mediates in turn the relationship between negative privacy concerns on well-being. And subsequently, well-being influences adoption and use, as well as word-of-mouth intentions. User characteristics such as innovativeness and quantified selves positively moderates the impact of well-being on adoption and use of the technology as well as word-of-mouth intentions. And finally, we developed an acceptance model to a smart store. So again, we can see that privacy concerns have negative impacts on perceived well-being and intention to visit a smart store. On the other hand, perceived social image impacts positively well-being as well as the intention to visit. The intention to visit uh, then subsequently positively influences the intention to buy. And we have innovativeness as a moderating variable. The more the user is innovative or more open to innovation, the higher will be the impact of intention to visit and intention to buy and the impact of perceived well-being on intention to visit. Here we extend the UTAUT2 model to smart home acceptance. So you can see that effort expectancy leads to higher performance expectancy. So the easier the smart home is to use, the higher will be the performance expectancy or the benefits perceived by the smart home. You can also see that social recognition as well as perceived hedonism, so the joy of the smart home, the hedonic aspects and experiential aspects have a positive impact on well-being and you can see that finally negative factors such as privacy concerns uh, and technology fear negatively impact trust on the other hand the higher the smart home has security the higher will be also the trust subsequently trust will be po will positively influence behavioral intention of use of the smart home so the more customers trust into a smart home, the lower the privacy concerns are, that is that the data that is collected will be collected and used safely, the higher the security uh, that will not harm the health of the user, and the lower the technology fear, the higher the trust, and thus finally the intention to use. We can see also that social uh, recognition perceived hedonism impacts well-being. Um, and the higher the well-being perceived, so mental well-being, psychological well-being, and health well-being, the higher will be also the intention to use. On the other hand, 
uh, trust has a negative impact on bad being. Uh, uh, so trust decreases bad being because bad being negatively impacts behavioral intention of use of the smartphone, which is intuitive. And user innovativeness has a positive impact on behavioral intention of use um, as more the users are open to innovation, the more naturally they're open to use a smart home. And on the other hand, a personal characteristic uncertainty avoidance, the more users avoid uncertainty, the less they will adopt smart homes. And so the lower will also be the impact of the model antecedents on behavioral intention to use a smart home. In the following, we apply the UTAUT2 model to acceptance of autonomous cars. As for the smart home, we introduce effort expectancy as an antecedent of performance expectancy, but also social recognition and perceived hedonism. And so the easier the car is to use, the higher will be also the usefulness or the benefits of the cars. The more it brings social recognition, the higher will be the benefits or the performance expectancy. And the higher the perceived joy or hedonism, the higher will be the performance expectancy. You can see also that social recognition and hedonism have a positive impact on well-being, consumer well-being. On the other hand, you can see that privacy concerns have a negative impact on trust. So the more the car collects and manages data, the lower will be the trust. And the higher the perceived technology security, uh, that is, that the car does not harm the health of the user, the higher will be the trust. This is important, as everybody knows about the car accident with the autonomous cars, where a driver died. And so perceived technology security increases trust into the technology, which in turn impacts positively well-being, but also behavioral intention to use. And well-being, as well as performance expectancy, impact as mediating variables between the antecedents, the benefits, uh, the impact on behavioral intention. User innovative positively moderates performance expectancy and well-being on behavioral intention to use. In other words, the more the users are open to innovation, the higher will be the impact of performance expectancy as well as well-being on behavioral intention of use of the autonomous car. In this example, we adapted the basic TAM model based on perceived usefulness, ease of use on intention to use for chatbots. And we enhanced the basic TAM model by the service quality model developed by Parasuraman and colleagues in 1985. So we consider that tangibles, uh, that is material elements of a chatbot, um, such as infra technical infrastructure, impacts positively perceived ease of use and perceived usefulness. The competence of the service provider represented by the chatbot has also a positive impact on usefulness. The reliability, uh, that is uh, uh, the more the chatbot is reliable in terms of information uh, giving and information search, the higher will be the usefulness. The more the chatbot is responsive, uh, that is, acts quickly in order to satisfy the information request of the user, the higher will be the perceived usefulness. The more the chatbot is empathic, uh, that is, able to feel and individualize the relationship with the user, the higher will be the perceived usefulness, but also the trust. And the higher the credibility of the chatbot service provider, the higher the trust. So you can see, see that these service quality input variables or antecedents positively impact perceived usefulness as well as perceived ease of use and credibility impacts positively trust. In turn, trust impacts positively intention to use. And so the higher uh, the trust, the more the customer or user has trust into the chatbot, the more he or she will reuse the chatbot. And the higher the perceived usefulness and the higher the perceived ease of use, the higher will be also the intention to reuse the chatbot. This model was tested with a chatbot of the traveling sector, a flybot, which searches information for 
flights users want to book. So in summary, we have seen that technology acceptance model can be developed for all new technologies. It is important to understand the concerns of the customers, the benefits a technology brings to the customers, and the reluctances a technology or the barriers a technology brings to customers. For example, privacy concerns or technology fears are important barriers to technology acceptance, barriers well-being, uh, perceived benefits, usefulness, performance expectancy, perceived ease of use, hedonic benefits, social value, relational value are factors that influence positively the intention to accept or adopt a new technology. So extensive literature and research has been done about the topic. You can find a large amount of articles on the drive and read these articles. Also you can see that technology acceptance model UT, AUT models have been applied to a large number of sectors and technologies. The important thing is to understand which are the factors that create and destroy value. So I ask you to read some of these articles to have a larger understanding about technology acceptance and the technology acceptance literature. In these articles you can find a lot of information that we have not deal with in this lecture. Thank you.